Hey guys, I want to show here my pathfinding algorithm or code that I've created uh, which I believe is probably the most optimal way you could calculate it. Uh, super fast, runs anywhere between z 0 and 1 millisecond, it's so quick. How it works is it's made up of separate paths. Uh, so like a path is called A here, that's the central corridor, it must have a central corridor that all the paths can ultimately connect to. Um, and then branching out from A, it has to be a lower alphabetic like B, C, D, etc. And as it gets further away, it must be a, it should be a lower as well. So C should be, that probably shouldn't really be C here, that should be like D, uh, D, because um, there's E there, because that would be lower than E. So, it will find the optimal way uh, to get to path from A to B, so to speak. Yeah, so it's like a tree structure. It branches out, and so the, the, the further away from the central corridor A, it should be the high a alphabetical letter. So going from A to Z, going out, in other words. Uh, you can start with, doesn't have to start with A, B, or C. You can start with G, but so long as after whatever connects after that from A, it's a higher than the previous one. So this is like H. So G, H, I, J, etc. You can do, do that sort of thing and that'll work just fine. Um, so how it works is it simplifies the whole thing. There's no distance checking at all. No distance checks made whatsoever, yet it still finds the optimal path if you've coded it in that way I've just said. Um, very simple actually. So for example, I'm just running this code in a, in a, in a game engine just in the scripting editor. So you have your starting an end path uh, I've just got a little uh, test situation here I can just throw in different paths and test it out it's all been tested it runs very nice very fast now it says they're three milliseconds that's because I'm showing all the uh, text on the screen if I turn that off it'll it'll go to about zero between zero and one um, there it is time taken zero milliseconds uh, to get from E to C. So E1 is a path node. So each path has multiple nodes, obviously, uh, positional nodes making up that one path. So this C there goes from C2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's one path C. And there's path F, path D, H, G over here, and the central path A. That's like the main highway, if you like. It's a bit like side streets all heading back towards the highway and then and then you go to wherever you want and then get off the highway and connect up with the uh, side street uh, as you like that way so so how how it runs is it, it runs it looks at both the start position and the end position and it works its way one step at a time back towards the central a highway and, and in the meantime it, if at any point it can, can can bypass the highway and just connect up directly it'll do that so it doesn't always have to go to the highway A. It, only if it can't connect up in the meantime, it'll it'll find its end result at uh, the highway A corridor, I call it. Yeah. So um, okay. So that's false. I'll just put that back onto true, so you can see a little bit of information. Super fast. This has got to be the most simplest way you could possibly do it. So all it needs is you're starting an end path node, and needs two arrays. Uh, updated. I'll just show you here in the um, notepad. It's a little bit easier to see. Um, <clears throat> so here's your main, this, these are your interconnecting path nodes. You just need to, so that, that goes from path A to path B. Uh, so these are all open, open path nodes, in other words. Not, you don't include in this list dead end so if it goes into one path and stops you wouldn't put it in here at all it's only open paths which are able to go for into one path and continue into other paths as well so a can go to b b to go to a a to c c to a so forth all the way here um, so you wouldn't include c to d because that's a dead end um, but you can have d to c because once it goes to c you can go here or down here all over the place so D to C, you can have that which is right there, but there's no C to D. Now the path names, you need this as well, this is the other array, you need to update the actual name of each path node that makes up each of these individual path connections. This is like a central a connection point between two paths, and these here is the names of the nodes that 
define this AB. So path A is, is, is actually called A1. Path B, where it connects together, is B1. So I'll show you that. Uh, so AB, there's A, there's B. So A connects at A1, it connects to B at B1. So in other words, for each of these interconnecting path nodes, uh, it has to have two entries. So in other words, the actual name of each one. Uh, so yeah, so you've got twice the number of this, these here recorded here. It has to be exact. It has to be in that order too. So AB must be in that order. First and second index equals the first index. BA must be that. AAC must be, you know, that sort of thing. So so there it is there. So once you've updated that, you've added the nodes how you want, connected it how you want, um, you then you just update these, this, these two arrays and, and that's all you really do. Uh, fairly simple. Um, maximum runs of 10, that's just that's just the number of maximum tries that the uh, the main the main function will run until it can't find a solution. But typically, it it finds it within uh, one one to two or three runs anyway. So you wouldn't need normally about five or six. You shouldn't, but I've put ten. Um, yeah, and this is just the alphabet. You, it's twenty six different paths are available based on the uh, alphabetical. You can add more to that at the end. You could probably put symbols in and other things after that if you want if that's not enough um, and if you need way more than 26 paths well I'm not sure why you, you would need a lot more but you might need a few more you could theoretically change the code to put like a a b b b a b a b c I don't know you could actually do that and have pretty much unlimited number the actual number of path nodes per path so a or b that's these um, that's the names of the main the main path a b or c etc down to z 26 different paths and in each number of nodes for each path between 0 and 999 so a thousand different paths in other words that should be enough uh, okay so you can see here all the different interconnecting paths uh, so if we want to change that say we want to go h2 uh, all the way and find the optimal path to say f3 we'll put that in here um, H2 just here and put in say F3 so that's where you want to go to click on execute and boom punch, punches out the information this is just a bit of uh, uh, summary data before the final path data here at the end this is really all you need just here the final path data uh, this is just it's just going through the process of a bit of debugging if you like it's saying go from HG to GA to AC to CF. Now these other stuff, that's just the index of the lookup, so it can keep it for later. And that's if it's going forwards or back. So these these B, it's going looking from the end to the start, and this is from the start to the end. Um, <clears throat> that's the outline of the path, and then I make up the full path here with the uh, so you got uh, G3, G1, G3 up here. So it goes. It needs to go from this this path to that path, and that's the name. And then it goes to the next connecting two paths, which is G1 to A3. But you need the name, the numbers in between, and just this this last part makes up those differences. So there you go. There you go. There's the whole thing. H2, H1, G3, G2, G1, A3, A2, C1, C2, C3, C4 then F1, then F2, F3. So there's the whole path right there, mapped out. Always works too, it's really good. If there's any issues, then it's probably your information that you haven't put in these two arrays correctly. So just go back and read the notes. Here's the notes all up here. Uh, you can just follow that. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, pretty much what I just explained anyway. Everything is just written there. Uh, so this is probably the fastest method. I would, I would pretty sure. I'd be pretty confident in saying this is the, by far the fastest way to do it. Uh, and I've called it Robo's intersecting path algorithm or Ripper. It's a bit of a Ripper. It's pretty good. Uh, with with approximately 90 plus percent optimal routing, it, you can get it way higher than that, um, depending how you've coded these paths. So like I said before, C, this this from here to here. 
you've got C4, C5, C6. That really shouldn't be the case because that's on the same level or, as these E's. So that really should be a new path. Uh, or theoretically, you could have all that one big path is, is all E. And that's just C. You could probably change that whole path to C if you want, or even just go across here. Yeah, that's probably better. Horizon horizontally, keep it all in one line. That's probably a better way to do it. So that would be, whole thing would be C. You could call that, you know, B or whatever. But so long as it's as it spreads out away from the, the A corridor, it's a higher letter, in other words. Yeah, and that way it'll always pick the optimal route, actually. Um, pretty straightforward. Uh, yeah, it works pretty good. Oops. So I'll just sh show you that without the text information. And see that? Time millisecond zero. So it ran, it's it's less than half a millisecond. Whatever it is, it, it, uh, it's, it doesn't tell you, but it's less than that, obviously. Um, so yeah, super fast. Uh, very nice. I uh, spent a bit of time on this, but I'm going to give it away for free uh, on Ichio. I just hope you guys can uh, support what I do. If you want to make a donation, feel free. Um, but yeah, it's pretty nice. Bit of code. It just simplifies a complex solution to the most simplest way. And you just help it along the, a little bit by just programming a couple of things correctly. You already got to put the paths in anyway. Things like that have to be in there no matter what, uh, whether you want to automate that or whatever you want to do. But uh, this, this part here is just directly linked to that. Um, you could probably automate that process if you really wanted to. Um, so I'm not really trying to beat A star pathing. That's different. It's it's slower, but it's going to be a bit more accurate. But this is still very accurate. If you've coded the paths, as I've mentioned, it'll be very accurate. Uh, so yeah, no, I would say 95% plus accuracy uh, if you've pathed it correctly. Okay, here's my little demo game. I'm going to test it out with the pathfinding. But uh, in terms of accuracy, before I'm actually I mean the optimal path accuracy. That's what I mean. It'll always find the end path no matter what. Uh, that's the good thing about it. In terms of optimal path, I've actually found it to be always pretty reliable. If you've coded the path incorrectly, it will it will choose the optimal path. I've not found any issues with that. Uh, it really depends on how you path the coded the path actually. Okay, so I'm just going to test this out. Okay, you can see the path outline. Uh, starting at A54, working its way down to A's and then back into C. Now that C is the last path that I was over there. The, the main highway A is the green ones. The side paths I've got in my little level is these yellow ones. So there's not that many but it, it's able to negotiate all these nooks and crannies just from a, a few yellow pa extra paths placed around. So here he comes now. Oop. Oh, he's coming back. And he's coming back the other way. Oh, he wants to come in here. It's a little bit stuck, that area. It's a bit tight to get in there, but he can do it. Alright, he's seen me and he's following me now, so there's no path, It's direct. he's directly following me until, I, until, until he loses visual, in a sense, and has to recalculate. So there it is there, so it keeps recalculating, does it instantly, it's no problem at all. So if I go over here, oh, he's jumped over, cheeky dog. Um, so we go over here. All right, so he's gone to the last known path. I must have lost me somewhere there. He'll be coming over here now. Okay, so that's the closest path there. It's picked up rather than that one. That's why it's gone there. So if I go over here... Oh, well, he already, he's already completing that previous path, so now he's going to do this one. He's a little bit blind. I'll, I'll fix up his eyesight a bit later on. Yeah, so... That's alright. So, yeah, it works fine. So we 
works pretty good. Yeah, so in terms of pathfinding, this uh, works actually quite well. You just got to make sure you put your paths in the right spot, and it will uh, be able to do it. Like that little, this little entrance here is, is difficult for it to get in there. It, it, it'll sort of get in there eventually, but it can be difficult for it. Anyway, but that's not a pathfinding issue. That's actually a, a node positional issue. Okay, so that's about it. Um, that works. Uh, it always finds the path and usually finds the optimal path too, actually. Um, lately, I haven't found any issues with it finding a non-optimal path. It's, I guess it's possible, but it must be pretty rare, so I don't think that's an issue. So anyway, hope you like that. Uh, cheers. Let me know what you think. That'd be appreciated.